Hey everyone, welcome to Regal Metalworks. This is Cole. Hey, here we are on Monday, and I made a little bit of progress on this 2x72 belts handle. As you can see, it's assembled here. We've got the box tube all welded up. So what we're doing here is we're welding it in sections all over the place trying to keep the warping down to a minimum. I went ahead and put 18 or 16 thou spacers between this bar and when I tack this up. It seems to be working a lot better than 8 thou, um, but we'll see how when we get it done. I, I definitely have a lot more weld on it than the other one and the other one warped. Um, so we're going to continue to weld this up. We're using pulse on this to also try and control the heat. So we're welding at 190 amps um, with right about 30% 30, 30 background. <clears throat> so what's happening is uh, we're probably not even quite getting to 190, probably like 160 and then it's backing down. So that ke helps keep the heat out of it, plus moving, plus pausing and waiting and letting for the, everything to heat soak. Really does help with the warp. All right, we let it cool down for about five minutes now. No problem. Well, we're off the table. We'll start back welding this, trying to patch, pick up all the whole uh, joints that aren't welded yet. <clears throat> we're gonna try and pick up all the areas where we got gaps on our weld. Let's start down here.
two weld areas left to finish. It's taking some time to let it cool. Checking it. Um, we've been doing okay. It get a little tight and let it cool down a little bit more and then it seemed to loosen up a little bit. So I'm pretty confident that these last two welds won't do anything and we'll be good to go. What I did uh, after a little while is I backed my background on um, pulse setting down, uh, the background current. So when it's on the uh, down slope on the low side, I went from 30% to 10%. It's a lot harder to see because you don't have as bright. The puddle chills a lot faster, but it helps keep the heat out of the piece. And that really seemed to allow me to string this up a little bit better. It sucks that it's all stringed together like that. I wish it was like one continuous nice weld, um, but it would never fit if it if it if we did. So Just check it real quick. Still good. See, it's a little tight at the end where I just had the heat in it, but we're only need to go in there anyway. So, but I'm pretty confident that once I cool it down here. It'll loosen back up like it did pretty much the whole entire time. Alrighty guys, so I got the <clears throat> pieces in the tumbler, the uh, pieces I just welded up, the uh, box tube. One of them is still a little tight after I finished it, so I'm going to deburr it and make sure there wasn't any burrs on it that I picked up because I actually sanded it a little bit. So now I'm uh, welding up the feet. <clears throat> These are uh, two and an eighth away from the edges. Uh, we're just going to tack them here before we weld them. Yeah, that turned out pretty good for a fuse weld. Put welded up. I know I, I think I failed to mention this, but this whole entire thing is made out of 3 8 inch plate steel. Um, this is the thinnest part, is this 8 inch box tube that I decided to use for the spacer for the leg. So the two boxes that I welded up will actually sit across this. Well, one of them will, the other one bolts to a second pivot. But I'll explain all that as I get further along. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Uh, a quarter inch plate would have been more than sufficient. Three eighth is way, way overkill and not necessary. But hey, whatever. Just following the plans, not mine. <laughs> I'm sure it'll turn out just fine. What you doing, buddy? Huh? Keep a lookout. How you doing, Birdie? Wiggy? You got their fluorescent coats on. <laughs> hey guys, it's Tuesday. Made some more progress on that 2x72 belt sander. And uh, from the video you saw yesterday, or not yesterday, I guess you <laughs> saw today, um, I finished up quite a bit more of it. <clears throat> I finished welding up all the hinges here. They proved to be quite a challenge to try and keep them from uh, warping. Um, and I actually had to cut one of the tabs off and re-weld it because it was just hanging everything up. But essentially this is how she goes. 
You get the solid inch and a half bar. You slide in and out. These are for uh, ones for platinum ones, for, so you can change out your roller balls, uh, roller. Uh, so you can change out your pulleys. So this will mount on here, and then you can have like a four inch pulley up to, up to I think a ten inch pulley. He just came out the the guy that designed this kit, which is we'll give him credit for it. Jeremy Schmidt. He has a YouTube channel. He sells those plans. I think they're about twenty dollars or so, and he has a pretty good video going over it. And it's uh, actually quite amusing. Um, I, however, probably wouldn't go about some of the ways that he did it, but it, it works. It's just it's very tedious and very time consuming. So the next step that I'm on here is I have to mount this big uh, VFD motor, variable frequency drive motor, onto the back of this guy here. So I have to weld off a plate and a, uh, attach a piece to it so that I can mount the motor to it. Now in his original designs, the motor size he had was a standard uh, yeah, uh, 56 motor frame. This one is a lot larger, so I'm gonna have to get creative here a little bit. Now this is really designed, the motor actually sits lower than this, so I'll actually have to hang it off the back of the table when I, when I lay it out. And this is actually meant to sit up. He actually designed a table that actually has a cutout for the motor because the whole motor swings. And the reason for doing that is the, it allows you to swing the motor and the pulley so that you can do it horizontal or vertical. Uh, and your platen still stays the same, which is, it's actually a pretty brilliant design. I, I'll give that to him. Um, it's just the, <laughs> it's, it's pretty heavy duty. This is all 3 8 inch steel. These are, like I said, inch and a half solid. Um, I had to use some 3 8 plate that I had left over to cut this particular pivot point here and these guys. And the only thing I had was AR400. So this, uh, this thing is actually going to be bulletproof. Um, that's what they use to make targets out of and I had some of that left over so I had to go ahead and use that because I didn't he supplied the customer supplied all the material but he didn't supply quite enough of it but uh, it's coming along um, I got about believe it or not 10 hours up to this point it was a lot of finicky you know you have to make this box tube and it was moving and warping and you had to move all over the place and try and keep heat out of it so that these guys are still sliding in and out. There's very little clearance. This one I think had 8 thou of clearance all around. This one I actually did 16 thou. Because this one we, we ran into some issues and it still gets a little snug there in the back which is fine because it's never going to go in further than that anyways. So. That's where I got to today on this this project here. Um, I'm trying to fit it in, like I mentioned before. Uh, however, I can get to it for the customer. You guys ready to go home? You guys ready to go home? Yeah, me too. I'm tired. Why don't we go home? Well, that's about all I have for you guys today. Um, customers coming tomorrow to pick up this guy. Sign. I have a, another client possibly coming to check out the Shop Saber um, plasma table. They're looking to purchase one. They currently. I checked out their website. The stuff they do is really neat. They make uh, like shelters in like Africa and uh, some of the worn torn countries and they make them out of stainless steel and it's kind of an artistic piece. So they want to see if this machine will actually cut it. They'll actually be here tomorrow which is which is actually pretty cool. Um, so we're going to do some test cuts for them to see if that, that that'll meet their needs because right now they're having it all uh, laser cut for them. I guess it's a little cost prohibitive and looking at the structures they make they're, they're pretty big so and they probably cut quite a few uh, I don't even know 150 panels or something out of a 4 by 8 sheet it's pretty crazy so that's all we got for today if you enjoyed what you see feel free to subscribe we'd appreciate it and uh, we'll talk to you next time all right have a good one so bring your A game cause you know this party won't stop we could never run out of time sipping strawberry lime you know i want to share it with you